What's up guys, welcome to the GC journey. This is it, we are finally doing this. We are going to construct an entire motorsport grade concentrically twisted engine bay harness for the GC8 from scratch. So the goal of the series is to give you an in-depth, comprehensive documentation of the entire process from start to finish. We will go over the materials, the tooling, and all the stages of the entire process. There will be, of course, a number of episodes to this series, and I don't know if you're a wiring nerd like I am, but this is the series I've been looking forward to doing the most, and so now we're finally doing it, so I'm excited. I have had a go at making my own engine bay harness, but I didn't document it very well, and I'm not entirely proud of the final result so we're doing it again and we're doing it right this time before we begin i would just like to express my gratitude to hp academy and your time from your tuning power by wire whom without them this series would not be possible so if you have no idea who i just mentioned stick around for more on that later in this episode so with all that out of the way let's get started okay so the first thing that we are going to be doing is listing all the components in the engine bay that are going to be wired to the harness it's basically almost everything uh, for example here i've uh, made this uh, little excel sheet with the name of the components the wire length that will be required when we move on to the harness layout in the engine bay i will list the lengths of how much wire each component requires i added another column here that uh, adds 20 percent length to whichever length i enter in the uh, column before this is because when you do a concentric twist you need to take into account that you're going to need some extra length due to the twisting the wires end up shorter next column is uh, the wire color and the last column i called it wires to add which means with every component you might need to add like a sensor ground or sensor supply and so here i will list all the wires that i need to add to that uh, signal wire going to the sensor listed so i will continue to list all the components and then uh, we'll move on to start figuring out the layout in the engine bay and uh, start documenting all the lengths required right so we've completed the component list which is the first stage now moving on to the second stage is the harness layout and branching and everything we've printed out the component list prepared some labels for the mock-up harness which your time will now do last time when i made the harness the lengths came out way too long planning wasn't very professional i uh, i lack the experience professionals do so this time i wanted your time to do the branching and the harness layout for me. So we'll now see Yotam work his magic and we will continue from there. Okay, so we have completed the second stage, which is the harness layout and branching. I will now copy it onto paper. And I'd just like to say that if learning all these stages and how to actually perform them properly is something that you're interested in, then there's an online school called HP Academy, which they have like wiring and tuning courses and basically anything motorsports related you can think of. Uh, I myself took a number of their courses and I literally went from knowing nothing, like I really, I didn't, I didn't even know what a relay was, to getting a job uh, working for the number one motorsport wiring guy in Israel, this guy. And so I reached out to them and I told them that I wanted to do this series and uh, which, you know, without the knowledge I acquired through their courses, I would have not have been in the position that I am today to be able to produce this, uh, this, this series. 
And so uh, they generously provided me with uh, some discount codes for their courses. And so I will leave links uh, to their wiring courses in the description below. So if you're someone like me who likes to further their knowledge and get a better understanding, better grasp of how everything works, I highly recommend. So what we're gonna be doing now is moving on to the bulkhead connector. This is the connector that we are going to be using. It is a Deutsch 47 pin connector. There are five slots for the higher current pins, like for the power ground, uh, power supply for the injectors, the ignition coils, that kind of stuff. And 42 slots for the lower current and signal wires. And so that's the connector that we're gonna be using. Now, the wires that we're gonna be using are TXL wires. Now, when it comes to materials, there's always gonna be a range of entry level, mid level, and professional level. The thing is, there's usually a reason why some materials are more affordable than others. And so to understand the difference between the cheaper OEM wires compared to the TXL wire that we're gonna be using, it is over to our wire expert, who's all the way over at this table right here next to me. Why would you prefer to build your harness from TXL wire other than using the factory wiring that you already have? The TXL wire is built to withstand heat that is going to be subtracted to in the engine bay. The factory wiring is not that suitable for that uh, matter because it's, uh, it doesn't have the longevity that uh, the TXL wire will have withstanding the heat. And I'll prove it to you. If we'll take a standard lighter, you can see that it starts burning quite easily produces a lot of smoke while burning. With a TXL wire, you can see that it doesn't produce much smoke and it doesn't lit up that easy. I have to still remain on the lighter and remain and remain and remain until it starts finally producing something that it will burn. So we can conclude from that matter that the TXL wire is more built to withstand heat and in the engine bay we have a lot of heat that is conserved and heat that is projected from uh, heating elements like the engine itself, the water hoses, the exhaust manifold, the turbo, all those stuff. And we, we want a wire that withstand uh, much more heat than the factory wire. Another cool thing that you can say about the TXL wire is it's, it has a thinner insulation than the factory wiring that you can use. It saves some space in the engine bay. And in the harness building that we, wa we want to make smaller as, and lighter as we can achieve, it's nice to have a thinner insulation wire. Okay, so the harness layout has been copied onto paper. Not my prettiest work, but uh, no one's gonna see it anyway, except for everyone who's now watching and can see it. But anyway, now that we know what length of wire we require, it is time to start preparing the wires, cut them to length, and start populating the bulkhead connector, the, the engine bay side of the bulkhead connector. Let me know in the comments below if the information here is detailed enough for you, if you're getting what you expected or if you would like us to go into even more uh, details. I just don't want the episodes to be too long or too boring. So I'm trying to find the balance. Let me know, I would love to hear from you. And so that is all for this episode. So thank you very much for watching and until next time, see you in the next one.